Hello, everyone, and welcome. Oh, hello, everyone, and to, welcome. To draw class. To draw class. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I did there it. it is. You did it? Yeah, we're here. I think that for some reason OBS has given me a slight uh, audio delay, so just don't look at my face when I talk. Yeah, just look don't at... look at our moving images. That's not what we're here to speak no. about today. Karina's got so much stuff for you to be looking at besides our mouths that it's not even going to matter. Let me make sure all my stuff is pulled up. Where are my notes? I thought I'd be more on top of this, but it's really rainy today, so that basically ensures that <laughs> I will not be on top of anything yeah. <laughs> until I see an, a ray of sunshine again. <laughs> but yes, hi, Hello. patrons. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Karina. I want to learn about the Karina Method TM. <laughs> I well I'll go into it and once once we feel like it's a good time to yeah. start yeah this is just the start I'll of just, class let yeah. people fill in this is another uh unstructured one due to how goddamn busy we all are this month oh boy uh <laughs> the end of year months uh are they're always a lot, but we were like, let's also do a convention and also have an election in there yeah. as well. I mean, I will say I am so excited to be like doing Anime NYC with Oh, same. Yeah. I've been, I realize I've been to Anime NYC every year since it started. Wow. <laughs> and it's all, I, I have like, it has such good associations with me. So the fact that we get to do it as a team is only going to make it better. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, I've never been, so. Yeah. Yeah, because you were you're usually out, so yeah. Yeah, I would have but... been out, but I was like, not this time. <laughs> I, I changed my Woo. Thanksgiving plans. Just a schmidge. Just but... a smidge. Yeah, it'll be so cool. But uh, if you're watching yeah. the vod after it's made public, we already went, <laughs> and so you yeah. know whether whether this is true what we're saying. I I'm sure it'll be true. Yay. <laughs> I just uh, I got I got to put it on record so much of my morning uh cuz I call my mom every Friday mm -hmm. and we usually talk for like an hour. That's so nice. And a good chunk of that hour today was me talking about preparing for the con and her being like, "But do you have orange juice <laughs> in your con bag?" <laughs> And I was like, why would I need orange juice? I don't even like orange juice. And she's like, well, if you're bringing first aid, if someone faints at your table, you need it's usually due to like low blood sugar. Mm. So you need to give them orange juice. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to bring orange juice. We do have snacks if that miraculously happens. And she's like, no, they'll choke on snacks. You need orange juice. Go get some orange juice. <laughs> And she was like really harping on me bringing orange juice for about 20 minutes. We kept circling back to orange juice. Amazing. And um, yeah. <laughs> and she's not wrong. I'm just like, hey. It's just like, they, I feel like yeah. there are other there are other juices that have sugar. But it's it's got to be orange juice. Yeah. Well, she said, or apple juice. Or apple juice. <laughs> But really, orange juice is the superior. <laughs> but nah, she's just she's just being way more like <laughs> forward thinking than I am, I guess. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Well. So maybe I'll get some orange juice. I don't know, but yeah. I feel like I, I wrote down all my fucking boo-boo thoughts in okay. my little notebook and uh then i didn't have time to actually formally outline it so it is gonna be a little free a little wild style today but i, think... I did pick out some of my favorite comics as examples so we'll have fun great mm. well we got we got seven people watching right oh, now shit. 
<laughs> so thank you, mods and patrons, for being yeah. here to learn. And of course, thank you to future viewers watching the VOD as well. Ooh. Oh, we <laughs> as soon as I said that, <laughs> it says we lost two people. <laughs> oh no. They do not like orange juice either. No, that orange juice talk really. I'm sorry. Really scared him off. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how accurate the YouTube uh, stream manager is, but anyway. Yeah. I think we can get into it. Okay. I mean, less people here, less people to hear me be stupid. Let's get a little more coffee. Can you hear that? Is that like ASMR? Do, do, do. I heard do do do. Oh, little sips. But, yeah. I didn't hear the sips. Good. I never know. Um. But yeah. Well, I I'm here to talk about the comics, and uh, I I say Karina method very jokingly, uh, because I, you know, unlike other fields of art which I have studied in my eight years of art education formal art education i've never technically like uh, studied or like done any like guided practice in comics it was kind of just something that i like always liked doing and picked up and kind of made my own thoughts about uh i've never read a book <laughs> on how to like you know uh craft comics i know the scott mcleod as his name right yeah a uh, book is like the big resource for a lot of people i've never read it just for the reason that i don't read a lot of stuff and um uh, a lot of non-fiction i only read fanfics and korean webtoons but yeah um so this is a lot of just kind of like uh it's gonna be a lot of just like my take on things and how I feel about things, uh, you know, like how my own process and I don't know, maybe that'll be an interesting uh, insight to some people, but I, that's my disclaimer. Interesting uh, to me. Yeah. I think you make really cool comics. Yeah. I, I, that's effective. not to say I don't think my method is, uh, I don't think my method is valid. I I think I know what I'm doing, but I think you know. What yeah, you're doing. I'm just I'm just saying. I, I think I anyone don't... who's seen yeah. your work <laughs> thinks you know what you're doing. Yeah, but yeah. So that was that was my little thing. So I guess I I would start. Um. So I guess I could talk a bit about like the process of like going into creating a comic and stuff that I usually uh, uh, do, and then just various thoughts on techniques and the medium itself. Uh, and let's see what I've gathered. I haven't, I haven't, but <laughs> I figured I'd start with the laying the f groundwork for your freaking comic, because, oh God, are they a lot of work? Yeah. Um, so... What are my things? Uh, see, the unfortunate thing about comics is that unlike just drawing an illustration, it requires writing. So, uh, and all of this first bit where I talk about process, I will be using uh, my Hawkeye PI uh, stuff as examples because I probably did the most like writing work on Hawkeye PI. Sure. Because uh, uh, for those who may not be familiar with my various projects, Hawkeye PI was my big comic that I did under the uh, <clears throat> company that we previously worked for. And, um, <laughs> but I also yeah. did this other comic called Two Demons, which was my like <laughs> piece de resistance. It's my masterpiece, my magnum opus yeah. of the Overwatch fandom. And, um, so that one was really just a very self-indulgent, like self-serving project. And that one had almost no writing, I think. Uh, uh, where is this? Where does this open? Cool. I did take a screenshot. So for Two Demons, which is just, you know, a fan comic, 
I wrote it entirely in my notes app on my phone. It's This is uh, struck out because the entire thing through the end that I still haven't finished because a lot of reasons. Uh, it's written in the notes app and I just cross out what I've already finished as I go through. But it's basically written entirely in the dialogue with maybe some like visual direction and that's it that that's usually how I go about writing my bullshit and then I just go back and I tweak it over time so uh yeah so with, with two demons this is literally what it looks like it's just it's only the dialogue and then like a little bit of like arm out Hanzo gets shot <laughs> You gotta but write yeah. down every time Hanzo gets shot. I just realized yeah, that my important. my picture, in addition to being delayed on audio, is also mirrored because I'm using the Zoom uh, oh. camera. But that's fine. It just it just I... says "sorry" backwards on my shirt. It's fine. It doesn't change oh. anything that Karina's saying. So interesting. <laughs> I just just noticed that. That's so confusing. It looks normal to me. Yeah, because it's on it's on Zoom and I'm using the Zoom camera and the way Zoom shows you. I mean, there's a way to change it, but I'm I don't want to change it huh. because I, I don't want to take up more time. I just thought I should call it out since uh I'm sure people have noticed or will <laughs> notice. <laughs> gotta get it gotta get out ahead don't of it. Don't look at him. Just don't look at don't him. Don't look at me. Look at the stuff that Karina's talking about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so usually I'm a little like less organized about planning, but since I was working with um, a single editor <laughs> for Hawkeye PI, I did have to have every and and I was on a um, arguably uh, let's just say unrealistic schedule for Hawkeye PI. Um, I I had to have everything set out really, really clearly when I first started it. So I did a lot of writing for Hawkeye PI. Like, I think it took me a month to write the three issues that came out. And um, it's so I, I forget if I've, like, talked about this on prior streams, but, like, uh... For Hawkeye PI, the very initial thing that I did was that I got together with Julia and this was like so intimidating to me because it was the first time I was actually like doing something with Julia because <laughs> I think this was like, uh, yeah, because it was before I um, uh, joined Drawfee. So I hadn't really worked much with Julia but since like she made Schmidt, I, I wanted her to be involved with like the initial ideation of everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of had like a couple meetings where we kind of bounced off ideas of like, you know, what the characters were like and also like what this three issue run would look like. And it was basically just uh, the store, like what would happen in each volume as well as like the story beats of each one. So, for example, uh, all the things I, like, pulled are from issue three because that was actually kind of, like, the most challenging issue and the most, like, it kept changing. And, um, yeah, and Mike asks in chat, how much did the story writing change after the initial writing? Oh, baby. Um, because, like I said, Hawkeye P.I. had an <laughs> unrealistic schedule that I was on. And... Um, <laughs> That's why it's laid out, like, aside from the fact that it was for a very specific digital platform, it's laid out very concisely mm -hmm. because of how little time I had to actually work on it. So Julia and I kind of, like, came up with this idea of, like, okay, in volume one, they're, like, just, they're meeting and they have to, like, do this really trivial tasks uh, that Schmidt thinks is a case and Nando doesn't. Um and then two is where they find the dog. Fun fact, the joke about the dog having a knife was just a joke that I made in the meeting. And then I thought it was funny. <laughs> so I wrote it into the story. Oh my God. The panel um, where the dog, I don't want to spoil it, but the, I mean, it's really good. And uh, there's, there's some really good, just like issue three, which is the one I'll be. Issue two is my favorite, but issue three is probably the most like, thought out one mm -hmm. so 
in this one, uh, Schmidt and Nando kind of walk into the scene of a kidnapping because, of course, they did. Yeah. But the initial story beats, and uh, I, I had wrote them down. I had written. I wrote. I wrote them. You've written. Here. You've written them. So the ones that we came up with in the meeting is Schmidt's friend hasn't been posting on Instagram. Schmidt is concerned. Schmidt breaks into the apartment. It's ransacked. Find a clue. Go to place. Nando gets kidnapped. Uh, sad Nando. Find a victim. Schmidt saves him. <laughs> Emo. Teamwork. Sad and then, <laughs> But that's not how the issue actually played out because that's a lot of steps. Yeah. And I, I had to condense it into as few pages as possible to be able to meet my stupid deadlines. <laughs> so yeah. um, we cut out. And I think issue three, not my favorite because of uh, how difficult it was for me to finish it, just like on a human level. Mm -hmm. uh, but like writing wise, I think the fact that I had so little, like I had to condense it so much was actually a big strength of the story because like in these initial things that we came up with it's like um they start here they go to a place uh nando gets taken to a second place Schmidt has to find him they're all in this like other place like there's just like too many steps yeah so you have to in order to efficient like yeah to in order to make it more efficient and get it out like a lot faster um we cut out like the entire like moving around and it's just like they show up to a place and that's where they're already at the scene of the crime yeah they just wander into the crime unknowingly which i you know in hindsight think is both very funny and like a good way to uh speed up the process because i think issue three was 50 pages uh, which was 10 more than the other two issues, but like it would have been so much more if there was any secondary locations yeah. to like the two. <laughs> just put them right where the action happens. Yeah. That's just like. And the same thing happened in volume one because uh, when Julia and I like initially pitched it it was like oh Schmidt puts out an ad looking for like some someone to help them and then Nando answers the ad, so they meet up at, like, the, you know, agency, and then they, like, get in the car, and they go to meet with the client, and then they go to the airport, and again, that's a lot of steps, so it just cuts down, it, like, I just trimmed it down to Schmidt is going to the airport alone, and Nando happens to be his Lyft driver, and then they kind of, like, chat, and then that's how they end up working together just kind of by coincidence which again i think worked out really nicely yeah so uh it, it was it, yeah it was nice so because you know i remember reading them uh when they were coming out <laughs> and uh i didn't i i knew you i knew you had been stressed out working on them but i i didn't know like all the backstory about how many iterations the story had gone through and just like reading the first issue I was like oh yeah this is very just like clean efficient storytelling yeah and uh thank you <laughs> you know you get to just focus on on the fun dialogue and the yeah and the hot I, guys being pi I do typically write like if I'm writing something and like drafting my comics ahead of time I do typically write almost exclusively in dialogue because a lot of my, like most of the comics I've worked on just for myself are driven by the dialogue. So mm -hmm. that's why, uh, and like this one I found uh, as I was like gathering all my stuff for today. So this is actually like a whole, this was like the first draft of issue three. And this is just like a whole conversation I wrote that was like, for a different scenario so that's not even in the final i just thought that was cool but i i did have like a notebook where i just kind of like did all my brainstorming for uh hawkeye pi and 
typically how it would be is that I would just like write down these story beats, like these ones. Yeah. And uh, you you can see this one. It used to say something else. I don't even know what it used to say. But and then I was like, <laughs> no, they they just skipped straight to it. And um, so it's like <laughs> this is a really I would big just... apartment. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a really yeah. big apartment. <laughs> So I would just like write down like these are the main things that are happening like yeah. these are the important little plot moments and then you know and then arrow 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 and then I just fill in in between with like the little moments that I like to focus on because I really enjoy little character moments like this is a really big apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it only follows like a hundred people and we're mutual so we're basically close <laughs> friends. <laughs> You're so oh, you're so good at writing <laughs> lines. Uh, awesome. Uh, I guess in the original draft, uh, Jenny was supposed to be a guy because it says he. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, I just like you know, it's like these are the steps that they need to meet, and then in between, I can just kind of like write down my thoughts about what happens. And then um, narrow it down from there. So it's if you if you're writing a little story, just remember to organize your ideas. Remember to map out the important stuff, and then you can focus in on the little things. Because I personally love to focus on the little things, but you can't always do that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you have all that figured out, then you can do, you know, you can continue polishing it. And, you know, once you know what the story is, then you can just kind of, like, make it a solid, you know, clean script if you're into that. Again, I don't usually do that, but since I was working with an editor, I sent, you know, I wrote up a formal script that laid out each page by panel. And um, apparently it was just full of typos. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if so the don't typos, look at those. the typos <laughs> for descriptions of what's happening never make it into the comic, so it's fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> just just got to make sure the dialogue doesn't have typos. I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure Hawkeye PI had no actual typos except maybe in the author's notes, which <laughs> is very impressive. Wow. So, <laughs> um. Uh, Al Watts asked, so you wouldn't have done the formal script if you weren't working with an editor? Probably not, and I'll get to that in a second, because it's it's a little bit of, like, an extra step to, like, my personal process, uh, because I'm a lot more visual-oriented, so just kind of writing everything down isn't as helpful to me. But in this case, it was, like, a good way to kind of, like, get everything going. But that takes us to our next little step, which is, oh, God, is fucking thumbnails, dude. Um, wow. So uh, my little secret is that when I wrote that script, because it was for someone else for the most part, I was writing it in tandem with doing the thumbnails. So I would. these are all uh, thumbnails for Hawkeye PI issue three. I, I have a whole little book, and these are the... I think I thumbnailed it twice. I don't remember which... I'm pretty sure the blue one is, like, the revised one. Hmm. But I, I'll i I'll show later that a lot of the ones are closer to the uh, old ones, which I don't fucking know. But, um, yeah, since I was, like, presenting it to somebody and they wanted a script, I... I would do, I would kind of thumbnail things out so I had an idea of like how I, like what panels I wanted on each page. And then I would like write the script. So, Cause you know, you can't just show this to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what some of these things mean. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're just little guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so, you know, like I did this for myself, just kind of like, you know, in my own head, I can kind of see what I'm going for. But then I would use this as reference to write the script so that there's like a full understanding of like the story and like how the characters are feeling and like what's being shown in every panel without having to actually like fully draw the panels. So, but that's just my, that's just me. That's just me. A formal script is always going to be incredibly useful, no matter what. Um, 
but it's it's usually a step a, a step that I personally skip just working on my own stuff. Like I said, for comic that I do for a, a basically no one, it's it's literally just this. Mm. I I write out the dialogue and then I do like a long ass thumbnail session where I just kind of like follow the dialogue and like thumbnail, you know, like plug in like this will go here and this will go here. Um but yeah for me thumbnails are like the most important part but it is nice to kind of have because you know if you go a long time without working on your overwatch fan comic that people keep tweeting at you to update <laughs> you'll return to those thumbnails and maybe you won't remember what's supposed to go where <laughs> um, you know because you didn't write a real script you just wrote a bunch of dialogue on the notes app of your phone and mm. you have to kind of remember you know like re backtrack and remember <laughs> what the fuck you were thinking um so yeah i i just skip it because i'm lazy and uh uh i i i have trouble focusing when i write so it it just kind of slows me down Whereas, you know, thumb thumbnailing is always the most important part to me personally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean and yeah, because there's, there's so many drawings. Just looking <laughs> at that making me tired. <laughs> These are all tiny. I have a book right here. <laughs> this is my little uh I have a bunch of like uh proto Ooh. But I, I couldn't, I wasn't, I, I thought I was going to design a proper logo, but then I didn't have time for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these, these are like what my thumbnails look like. Yeah. They're literally thumbnail sized. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And that's why these, Still, though, these they're, they're very like, yeah, these pictures are so scrungly because they're, they're very, very small. No, I mean, they're very, I don't know. They're more readable than anything I would attempt to draw at that size, I'll it's... tell you that much. Yeah, well, I guess it's just like a fun a fun little thing. I did uh, find this sequence. So you can see over here, like the thumbnails. <laughs> this is the final page, and then this is the script. So yeah. You can kind of see the one to one of everything. Yeah, this there's is... a. I, I really like the little <laughs> little face at the bottom there and the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> dogs. <laughs> This is how I like throw everything together. And yeah, because for me, like, if I know what the, like, as I'm thumbnailing, I'm just like, if I know what they're going to say, like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I'm just like, this is the part where he says the thing about dogs because it says dogs. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know where I am. Yeah, you're at the dogs part. Yeah. And like this one, I ended up changing the whole angle on it. Uh, but. I, I, I just knew what I wanted from him. Gotta get those Dilfy moments. Uh but yeah. I don't know why I thumbnailed this twice and then mostly used the first version, but I did. I just like this face. <laughs> That's why I would get to go. <laughs> he starts <laughs> Starts whistling. <laughs> <laughs> this is making me feel a lot more confident in my own thumbnail, says Al Watts. I always forget they're supposed to be quick dirty. Yeah. Yeah, like if they're just for your own reference, yeah. I mean that's that like I said, that's why when I was working with an editor, I provided like a real script because like this was this was for me these are for me yeah, and, and i think it's <laughs> this guy <laughs> it's super helpful to see them all laid out together because then you get a sense of sort of the the different shot compositions you're doing and like the the flow of it and you know yeah making sure you're not just reusing the same because if you just go straight in drawing panels yeah you can get get lost in the weeds you're not gonna have as as interesting of a uh, variation yeah. like all the different 
different ways you've broken up the page, the different like close ups and wide shots and all that all that stuff really adds like a nice rhythm to the whole the overall experience. It's like you're watching a show. Yeah, exactly. Um, Mads asks, what do you find the hardest part of getting your comics together is? Um, <laughs> I forgot that. Hey, but aside from finding the time to do them, <laughs> um, probably the writing. Uh, if Especially if I'm not on a, in- a tight deadline. You know, um, <laughs> Because I'm just like, I, like I said, you have to really map out the story and especially if it's going to be a long form story, like I know how it wants to start. I know how I want it to end. I know the important little small parts that go in between those arrows, but it's very difficult to like kind of keep like on track for me. So uh, the just organizing and writing and getting all my idea down is the hard part, I think. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, drawing is hard, but I like drawing. Writing is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I like writing dialogue. It's everything else. Everything else, just like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so these were just, like, my personal little uh, show of my process because... You know, once I have, like, you know, the the script and the dialogue written out and I have kind of an idea of the layouts I want to use for the pages, it is it it is just kind of like, okay, and then I sketch it out. Maybe I'll tweak it a little as I'm done. But, like, when, once you get, like, all that planning together, it, it, does, it does kind of just all slot into place over time. <laughs> but, yeah setting it up like this is there's nothing else to my process after this it's just like then you sketch it then you ink it then you color it you you figure out where to put those pesky speech bubbles and (laughs) that's it (laughs) yeah i mean so it looks Uh, like a a lot of your thumbnails uh you you include the the speech bubbles or at least like yeah because space for them it's definitely something you have to like have foresight for. I really like the face you drew on that thumbnail on the left. It's <laughs> 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 really good. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he do be panicking. He do be whistling. <laughs> uh, any tips for speech bubble placement? That's a fun one because I did not get around to that in my little lesson plan for today. But it is something that uh, I personally try to work into the thumbnails. Uh, like, like, like Nathan said, most of my thumbnails include a, a hint of speech bubble. Because, you know, you don't want to, like, draw this very extensive illustration and then just have to, like, slap a speech bubble on it. You want it to have, like, the room for it to also be there. Uh, so uh, we we can ruminate more on that later. I just haven't gotten that far. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I, I I typically just, like, try to figure out where it's supposed to be uh at every step like i didn't find i didn't pull up the sketches for any of these pages i kind of don't want to because these files are kind of chonky and it'll it'll be annoying but um you know like here uh with this one you know i'm just like okay they'll be down here and then the speech bubble will be up top but clearly that kind of like shifted as i finished it and um but you know it's just kind of like this is what the layout's gonna be and then i sketch it and i'm like actually i'm gonna move this around and then as i'm sketching i'm still drawing in the speech bubbles just so i have like an idea of where they are Mm -hmm. because um you know i do think with this one i didn't know where to put that speech bubble i feel like that's a bit of a that's a bit of an uncharacteristic placement for karina but you know, it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> it works. It works there. Uh, do I use the speech bubble tool? 
No, I I haven't really done a lot of comics in um in clip and like these were done in Photoshop and with a lot of my comics I hand letter and by extension I like do the speech bubbles myself. I can pull up one of my comics. I I have a two demons page that I was going to show for like Panel. The, like the 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 circle ones are, are like did you use a shape tool for those or yeah because with this one it's just shape tool and then the tails i just drew in and then i put an outline on the whole thing yeah uh but but then yeah. that like bump bumpy one you just hand drew that one right uh yeah yeah. Like that is just like a shape tool to make sure I have it spaced the way I like it and then just kind of go in. Gotcha. And then put an outline on it. But yeah, typically when I do comics, I hand letter because I hate myself. <laughs> and then I also hand just draw in the uh, speech bubbles myself. So yeah, <laughs> remember when his name was Jesse? That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so this is usually what i do but again i i had a really short uh amount of time to work on hawkeye pi so <laughs> couldn't hand letter it is probably for the best because hand lettering does uh give me big calluses mm. so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh yeah so that was just kind of a rundown on my little process i i put a lot of focus into the planning because i i think that is the hardest part for me at least but then yeah. once you have all of that in place then it makes it a lot easier to do the rest of it yeah it seems like it's it's hard but important yeah to do like especially if you want to do like a longer comic right you know, you got to write it. You got to write. You got to write, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so planning is just such an important step to any piece, mm -hmm. but especially with comics because there's so many like little working bits to it. Yeah. You just got to. It sucks. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that's my little rundown on how I set up a comic. <laughs> um, uh, this next part I didn't prepare anything for, so I'm going to just put this back up. <laughs> it's good. But, uh, I Peek behind I guess, the curtain. I guess with this one, I Karina can Karina just... just drew that like five <laughs> minutes before the stream started. <laughs> But uh, I, I wrote down a bunch of stuff because I wanted to kind of talk about uh, paneling, like, and just the medium of comics, because, uh, like I said, I've never, you know, you, you can read about comic technique and take classes about it. Yeah. I've never done that. Um, but I am an animator, <laughs> and I used to want to go into storyboarding, so, like, that's kind of like comics. It is, isn't it? But it's also not. <laughs> There's no word and bubbles in storyboard. Yeah, that's how I wanted to. That's how I wanted to start this next part. Cause, uh, what did I write? I'm just gonna read what I wrote if I can manage to untangle my handwriting. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of people will approach comics uh, with the mindset of animation, since that's kind of a you know, if you like anime, maybe you want to get into that, but you don't want to make an anime, so you make a comic. Yeah. And a lot of people will think, like, they'll have an instinct to kind of see it similarly to storyboarding or vice versa. But uh, although they're similar, they're both kind of sequential images. Mm -hmm. They're very different mediums. Right. So that's uh, a very interesting thing when it comes to laying out comics and... uh. Uh, 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 you know, there's, I, I don't know if there's any formal, like, way of putting this, but, um, you know, when you have 
animation, you have sound and time. You know, it's all set to, you know, play out for you. But uh, with comics, uh, you know, people have different methods of reading and, um, you know, like how they read and at the speed at which they read. So all you can really do is kind of guide people right. when you're like making a comic uh, as best as you can. You know, it's not just kind of feeding you that information like you would get it uh, in, you know, a movie or a show. Right. But... Like in a, yeah, you, you can with the with a. Yeah, like a something something moving you're in control of how long someone's yeah. looking at something whereas with a comic you can only try and yeah. try and tell the you use visual cues to like clue the the audience into what you want yeah. them to focus on but you have to but be more i do think that that's where kind of like the most uh interesting language in comics comes from because you know instead of time you have your panels Right. And the layout of your panels and how you frame everything. And, uh, you know, because I, I come from an animation background. I, you know, I love to imagine my stories playing out like my animes. But that's really hard. So sometimes I just settle for making a comic of it. But, you know, that's a different medium. But in my brain, the Karina method is that I have always viewed the panels as you know your camera and mm -hmm. um how you shape your panels how you organize things the size of them that represents like shots in a film yeah so what do i have what are my thingies uh i got, I got miscellaneous doodads um oh my gosh what, what should i start with um, I, I made a big ass note of this, so we're just gonna start with B stars, <laughs> uh, because this was a really interesting thing to me. Uh, haha, -ha, yes, is B stars. Oh, Karina, but I always thought B stars was a really interesting like manga to um anime adaptation, because I always felt like the manga of B stars was a bit more goofy. Um, than like the anime. I feel like the anime has a very somber mood to it. And I I think part of that is because, uh, at least for Lagoshi's character, he uh, experiences a lot of like introspection. Like he thinks a lot to himself. Um, so if you like compare this scene where they're just kind of walking home together and he he do her shoe for her. Oh, yeah. that's a cool. My yeah. eyes met with hers for the first time. What are my Lagoshi voice? Rabbit eyes are really black, huh? But, um, you know, he's having all these inner thoughts of just like, oh, I see. Maybe I was the one who wasn't stepping up. So when you're watching this play out in the anime, you know, he'll he'll be monologuing in his head but you know there will also be little breaks to continue having this conversation like outside of his own mind you know like in IRL I suppose so it plays out a lot slower than it feels in the manga because right. you know when when you're just reading it this is all happening simultaneously yeah whereas in the anime it's I wrote it down. It's a whole one minute and 17 seconds to get through what is, what, like four or five pages? Because, um, yeah, like there's all these little breaks in the conversation to kind of just like have this inner monologue. And I'm not saying that, like, I think that's a weakness of the Beastars anime adaptation. I think it's it, it just changes the mood to me. It feels a lot more like thoughtful and slow. Whereas this is just like, you know, his thoughts are happening at the same time that he's talking rather than having to uh, stop the conversation to get this secondary like dialogue in. So, you know, I just thought that was an interesting thing and I made a note of it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just a different medium. But, uh, 
it's it's a fun thing. Where what am I going at? Um I guess since I have my two demons open, I can talk about uh my take on paneling. Uh cuz yeah, this this is one of my favorite little sequences and um that I, I drafted and it is not successful in practice because of how I laid it out being wildly impractical for most mediums. Uh, but um, <laughs> it's uh it's a fun one. Cause like I said, I've always viewed, you know, the way I view paneling in my animation major adult brain is it is your camera. Yeah. Each panel is your shot. The shape of the panel indicates what kind of shot it is. And do I have like a better example for what I'm trying to get at now? I have I have a few examples. Uh I do have this I, I have this sequence from the Hawkeye comics that I really like. Um and since I didn't get another better example, uh I wanted to show this one. This is a really good, like, good, clean action sequence. And I do love this run of the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye. Not, I don't read a lot of, a lot of big boy comics, but this one is good. So, um, and I just, so you start off with like this real long panel I love a and long the panel. way that i always like view a long panel is kind of like a long shot yeah so like you know if this were a movie you'd kind of be like oh or you know maybe it would go this way since she's over here but you know what i mean and uh and then once the action starts you start having these kind of like quick shots yeah so all these like little panels and this one, I, I just love the way that, like, it's organized. Yeah, it's really uh, good, really effective. Yeah, one, one fun thing is just, like, these little panels with the arrow. Yeah. Like, it, it connects. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Yeah. But, yeah, um, so, you know, once, once there's, like, action happening, the panels break into these smaller panels because, you know, it's not just, like, a shot that you're sitting on. Um, it's more of just, like, rapid action. So it's just, like, boom, you know, boom, 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 boom. And, uh, you know, and then you cut to this guy and it's like, you know, he's, he's having a moment, kill them all. So, yeah. So then once it's slowing down a little again, you're back to the long panels and then, you know, here's a little more action. It's Those just, wide shots you know, and just step like by step goes back to and silhouette. then boom, wide shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the Hawkeye comic. It's so good. And, um, but yeah, and then same here. It's just because he's also kind of monologuing as all of this is happening, and it's just kind of like you know little moments, and then you can just kind of like you know it's just kind of like oh these tiny little moments, like the wire tenses, her back muscles tighten and lock. She slows her breathing, exhales, and just as she relaxes her hand, boom. And um, those machine you know, gun guys like... are terrible shots. They're hitting, the <laughs> They're hitting everywhere but them. She's just cloning <laughs> them with arrows. Yeah, but I think part of it is just you know part of what's being shown by these like smaller panels is that this is all happening like really quickly. Yeah, it's like as she's taking a breath, these are the little like vignettes of, that are happening in this whole scene. So uh, I love I love this comic. But yeah, it looks really good. Uh, also, the limited yeah. color palette. God, um, yeah. I, I. The way again, the this way is a little bit of a from... wild style. Have you read the Hawkeye comic? No. The Fraction Run. Okay. Oh my God. I'm just gonna throw this in here because I don't really have another spot to put it in. I just have a bunch of examples and like what they do, but like I don't have a fucking. So. My favorite issue of the Hawkeye uh, Matt Fraction run is pizza is my business. Like this is, I think this is like, it goes to show you that there's some things that you can't really do, uh, you know, that work best for comics as a medium. I think this is an example of like 
when a comic is the best way to like tell this specific story. So this uh, issue of Hawkeye is told from the point of view of the dog, Lucky, aka Pizza Dog. And um, so the whole thing, it's just you can only read the the words that the dog knows. Oh, that's cool. It's uh, the color scheme is do- only the colors a dog can see. So like even you can't see red. Uh, wow. Um, you know, and it's it has all these little pictograph things to kind of like tell you what the dog is thinking without really ever using words because it's a dog (laughs) and um i think this is one of those things where like if you were to do this uh you know like you could do it in in a different medium but like this is such a good way of doing it yeah i I love this issue it's so smart Because, yeah, like, the dog will only recognize certain words and, like, you know, everything else is just, like, nothing to the dog and the dog's just kind of thinking in images. So, uh, yeah, this is, like, I love this issue. It's just so smart. But, yeah. I just wanted to share that one. The dog knows (laughs) ex-wife. Yeah. (laughs) Um... I do like, I, I would have included it, but I thought these were kind of the two strongest pages to show the gist of the issue. But there is one panel later where he recognizes the words, don't eat the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Dog knows certain words, but, you know. So there's like a whole other story going on between like uh, Hawkeye and like Kate and, you know, these fucking bros. And... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, you know, you're getting it all from the point of the view of the dog. But I thought this was also like a good uh, example of just like properly guiding your readers, because even though you only get like some of the words, you're still given plenty of information, just like using these kind of like little pictographs and just like the words that you can see, um, you know, that you're never really lost uh even though it's kind of like a really weird setup (laughs) for a comic but i do i just love this issue i don't know i don't remember if i ever finished the hawkeye comics uh because they were always kind of like experimenting with different things but uh i thought this was like peak shit yeah Uh, Cause yeah, cause like even even with this, it's just you know you can kind of tell like what the dog is thinking without the dog even really like showing it. You're just you're just seeing the dog's thoughts, and you're like, oh. But yeah, I love that one. <laughs> so yeah, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, panels. So uh, I. Okay, I'll just go back to this one since we're on panels. So I I do, again, this was a very uh, impractical attempt, but I do love this one that I did because I was trying really hard to kind of like experiment. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, what is happening in this shot is that, uh, yeah, I'll just call him by his old name, McCree. Uh, McCree is kind of like, you know, he doesn't remember certain parts of his past and he's starting to kind of like uh, get those memories like come to the surface. So, uh, but he's also being possessed by something. So uh, as those memories kind of like start to occur to him, he's starting to, you know, lose it. It it sucks. So... (laughs) He's just like, you know, it's like shot, shot, shot. And then once, you know, he's kind of like starting to experience a bit of like a break and like, uh, uh, oh no, he is lose it. Um, the panels start shifting. And oh, yeah. I wanted to They're do that to kind of like, yeah to uh disrupt the flow of things so that yeah, as the reader clever. like you're kind of like feeling the dis the same sort of disruptions of just like 
everything's starting to get really unstable and like all fucked up. <laughs> so until the panels just start to kind of like get all out of whack. So uh, this doesn't work in printing, unfortunately, no, as I realized this a, later. This it digital... only works as one continuous scroll. That's a scroll. <laughs> so... <laughs> that's a scroll comic for sure. Yeah. Um, but right, and that's that's just something that's to think that's about. Something I like to play with cause... when you're. Oh yeah. Yeah. When when you're paneling, like, you know, typically you're gonna do like squares and you know rectangles and stuff, and but it adds drama to like start disrupting that pattern. Right. Um, so uh, typically if I want to kind of indicate that like something's off kilter, I'll start like fucking up the, the panels. Like these diagonals aren't even really that even. So uh, yeah, that that's just how I typically view uh uh, good panel. So I'm doing some good paneling fun. Um, what else? What else do I have? I guess this is also a good one. Um, I do have some examples from a bit of a deeper pull. I don't. Uh, where should I? Should I just do both of these? What is this? What is this? Uh, so this is from a comic I love. I think it's a French comic. <laughs> it's called Zombillennium. Um, uh, and this one is fun. I love the art style. It's about a monster theme park. It's so cute. I love it so much. <laughs> um, and this this one, this is just like a full page spread. This is the very start of the second book. Um so, you know, this is our first time kind of meeting these characters. And what did I do? Intro. What does this mean? Uh, I think this was for my, you know, uh, what do they call it? Storytelling economy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I love fake economies so much that I made one up. One, one fun thing about comics is just um, compared to animation uh you're limited by how much you can draw <laughs> which is why with two demons i go a little bonk bonkers a little bananas i'm off my rocker a little because i um did they make this into a movie they did okay i thought i saw it is a trailer okay. for something like this yes i have the movie it had a very quiet release um on like the film festival circuit in europe and then it just kind of quietly got released to dvd so i do have this movie as well as the art book just because i think the art style of it is so fun and the monster designs are so fun uh, i love this series but um yeah so another fun thing about this comic is that i feel like it's really well paced like there is a lot of stuff going on in this just like two page spread yeah, and, the, the big um, demon wings. Yeah. Shadow. Yeah. Get a lot of space to see that he could be a little demon guy. <laughs> but uh But God, they can't him. see from their vantage point. It's fun it's always fun when you as the audience are given information that the, the characters themselves yeah, don't that's get. That's a fun thing that you can just do. Yeah. Um but yeah and you know same same thing of just like here's your establishing shot you're kind of seeing they're just on this freaking road this this is missing the first page so this isn't quite <laughs> you know the but you know even on just like this page like you know and then here's your little car scenes they're pretty evenly spaced and then once you meet him you get this big panel with him looking all smexy but you know it had and then followed by like this it's it's a very ominous panel where it's just kind of this long you know you're kind of like seeing all these little scenes play out like bam 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 and then you get this and it's this pause so i love that but yeah and then you get like this beautiful panel where you're just like oh he's being he's being a scamp <laughs> <laughs> so um this guy's a scamp yeah, uh, this guy's the biggest scamp. I love him. 
uh read zombillennium it's great but uh my other example from zombillennium is this spread because yeah. same same thing it's it's a very like a lot more quick decently shots. uh huh a lot more quick shots in this one yeah and you know it's it's also doing the thing where like something disruptive happens it kind of tilts it it tilts yeah um so there's like an explosion yeah cuz like these are pretty short books uh they're quite skinny on my bookshelf but um they're very like well paced comics like they are very economic about their storytelling it's just all just like getting out there uh, and it's such a beautiful comic i love i love zombillennium but yeah, so you get all these little quick shots because a lot of the comic tends to follow these kind of like quick panelings um, laid out like this. So you're just seeing all this happen, just like quick, quick, quick. And then it falls and then boom, suddenly you're no longer in like that sort of like quick shot. You're all falling. Oh yeah. So the paneling starts to go down. And then even on this one, like instead of going, you know, Boom, boom, boom. You're going boom, 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 boom. So, yeah. And also, I just love these panels. They're so pretty. But yeah, so... And you just immediately know, since everything is going down and, like, the flow of this is even straight down, like, into the next page, you know that, like, you're reading it like this instead of, like, purely across. Yeah. But yeah, so... you can do so many cool things. Yeah, paneling is your is your greatest weapon when you're making a comic, because you can just, you know, as long as you know how to guide your reader, you can just do whatever, and it'll be like a movie. Because like if this were a movie, you'd start here and then just go down. It's a pan, and then these are your little like ah. <laughs> but yeah, I love Zombillennium. It it's looks cool. It's cool. I recommend it. It's got a lot of fun little guys in it. Like this so she guy. like she sends her son to die and then tells the mummy to go get him. Is yeah, that... she sucks. It's it's a it's a thing. She sucks. Wow. <laughs> he is she is the bad man of the book, so she's being very manipulative. Um if you ever want to borrow it, let me know. Okay. Just don't pull a Jacob, please. I absolutely <laughs> would. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing. It's, um, yeah. What else do I got? Two stars. Okay. Um, I want to. I I picked this out. I'm clearly not following any sort of numbered list here. I'm just kind of going crazy. So we're just gonna jump straight to my. This is one of my last examples. It's my last real example. And I wanted to share this because it is literally my favorite comic sequence ever. And it's from Black Sad. And uh, it means the world to me. And I just think it's like such a good sequence. Because uh, it is it is a sequence of what is effectively a shootout between Black Sad and his little meow meow. And uh, this scrungly dude. So... <laughs> You know, Boomer's baby. No, but yeah. Is he a so, Komodo dragon? Yeah, or some sort of lizard. But yeah, I just this this page changed my life. <laughs> this is the perfect action scene to me. Yeah. Um, but it's just, and it reads so wonderfully, and it's the same sort of thing of just like you know. Your paneling informs the reader's, you know, timing of how they read a sequence. So you have, like, this dramatic moment where he gets, like, shot. And, um, like, that that's scary, but it's not, like, the big thing here. So, but it's also just, like, so clear what is happening and what would otherwise be a very chaotic shootout scene. Because, you know, you yeah. see him fall. You get like meow, <laughs> but you know you get you get a good a, a good amount of time to see that like oh he's reaching for the gun, you know someone 
because you know someone is shooting from from at a distance so you see that like more shots are fired these are all this is all happening in quick succession you know you're reading it as it's happening just like in a moment because you know this is the same size as like a lot of the other panels tend to be so instead of reading it as like this happened and then this happened it's it's a lot more smeared together because of the size of things but yeah then you get to see that he grabs the gun Real positioning hands in yeah all of these. Holy this smokes. is one of my favorite panels just like in the world i think it's so good yeah the action of it like all the shit is falling his pose is so good i've 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 copied this pose before not like traced it but like tried to capture the same energy because he's yeah. you know like he's mid fall like he's all twisty and silly but it looks so good it's really good yeah yeah so you know and you you still get such a good shot of his face and the intensity of it all and then, you know, you see a very brief moment of just like, you know, he shoots the other guy. God, it was I a love rat. It. it was just a little rat. And so as you're seeing these like wonderful, wonderful shots of just like all this stuff, he's he's monologuing. Black Sad is a noir, so he does a lot of monologuing. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's so good, so beautiful. Um so yeah so and as you know this is so much happening in one page and then it just slows back down so you're just kind of seeing like you know oh there he is and then he gets up like you're not seeing every step again because he's just kind of going through it again and you know the lizard dies <laughs> oh. but and then you, know, you then get to see a this... rhino in a tuxedo. <laughs> then he has this big old flashback where everything's all spooky and red. Ah, I'm stinking. This part I am not as hype about. I do. Uh, this is just such a beautiful comic, but this this page is everything to me. Oh, I recognize this layout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. I've seen this is I've seen something similar. This is the one I redlined for the backgrounds episode just to figure out the perspective because yeah. I love this shot. Yeah. Um Yeah. But yeah. And you know, it gets it's a whole page spread because it's just like this you know, not only is it just like a shot of everything that's the room that they were in and you can kind of see the damage of everything but it's kind of like a reprieve from all this other stuff that's been happening because you know you had like the really fast paced action scene and then this flashback where it's all red and scary um sky dies and then you just kind of have this moment of like pausing and you have this whole big layout so you can do that I love this sequence. It's really good. This is my favorite comic sequence in the world. <laughs> there it is. It's just so perfect. Yeah. Especially, especially the action scene. Like yeah, him falling. It do not it. get better than this. Yeah. It's so beautifully done. <laughs> but... Little meow meow face. <laughs> he is such. A grizzled man, but also a meow meow. I love Black cat. Sad. He's a little yeah. cutie. He's still just a little meow meow. Uh, please read Black Sad. Like, it's just nice to look at. Because, like, all of this is done, like, watercolor. Uh, it's so good. But, yeah, I just... I had to keep the sequence going until this page because I think this page is such like a beautiful little scene break. Yeah. Because after this, it cuts to the next scene. But, you know, this is just one long sequence and it ends with him just kind of like laying there all sexily. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's but a it's, dead it guy is just kind of like out in my apartment. Yeah. Gonna just take Cause a Because, you know, like so much just happened. He yeah. like learned a lot of new information about this case he's working on. And this this page is just like a moment to catch your breath after right. all of that. Yeah, oh, it's so good. Um, 
what other shit did I write down? I'm just freestyling it at this point. Um, but uh, I, I guess one thing. I think huh? it's. Oh, I just think it's super helpful to like look at really good comics to get yeah, inspiration. I. I did kind of pick out these examples just this morning. But I did just like sit at my table and like go through my bookshelf and be like, well, I own a lot of comics I love. What do I got? Yeah. So I was just like picking out like, oh, okay, this one. This is, I was like, oh, of course I have to include the Black Sad issue. Like that's yeah. the best shit. This yeah. is formative media to Karina. Yeah. Um, But yeah and there's a lot of things where i was just like oh this would be a good one but uh read comics they're kind of good comics? <laughs> hey there's one takeaway from this draw class read comics yeah. they're good i wish they're i had good. more kind of like classic examples but unfortunately i left my copy of watchmen at my parents house which is across the country Ooh. so um but I think it's nice to kind of like I got, just I got look at the things that I like. <laughs> I got a Watchman. Yeah, we all got a Watchman. We all got a Watchman. Yeah, every fucking nerd, every nerd. our age has a copy of Watchmen. It's just how yeah. life goes. Aaron <laughs> Moore's <laughs> author picture is so good. Is that the one where he looks like a fucking evil wizard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a champ. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably like, I, I do have like a copy of uh, a Spider Man comic that my friend gave me. It's very good, but at the end of the day, I think it's more helpful, at least in my, to talk about the way that I view comics or to uh, present the things that really made an impression on me. So sorry, all you're getting is B stars and black sad and monster fucker bullshit <laughs> and um Hawkeye. Because yeah. <laughs> those are like the those are like very like standout things to me, like throughout uh, uh as I've been like growing as an artist. I've I've owned a lot of these books since like college at least, if not before. So you know, draw from the things that you like. I've literally redlined this panel. Um, so, yeah. I I do have one more thing in my little uh, whatchamacallit sample folder. And this was going to be... I, I didn't get around to finish it. <laughs> We've reached the part where I'm off script. <laughs> um, so, you know, I get... I, I've been asked before, like, what do you do about talking heads like how do you do a conversation and I'm like that's a wonderful question and as I was like going back to kind of pick pages out of Hawkeye I found this page and I thought it was really interesting um because I don't necessarily love this page but it is still very well done for what it is because like they're having this conversation uh I didn't include the page before but you know the panel is just like you know you know the Avengers why do you work with me so it's just them kind of having this whole back and forth where they're they are just talking heads, but because of the way the panel is arranged and it's very like <laughs> it's almost like a design more than like a comic page, like it's just tiled. Um, but another thing is that you can literally just skip from this panel to this panel, and you get the point of the conversation. Like all of this is just kind of like fluff, yeah. As as opposed to like, like you know, you get you get little character moment out of it, but at the same time, like, it's very much just like you. You can also just kind of like, ooh, pretty, and then glaze over it if you're really bad at keeping attention, like I am. Yeah, um, I love the blue, <laughs> the blue background and the more like pink background and then you get the yeah. nice little checker pattern of it from the, the yeah. little shots like i do again the gosh who is this artist i left all my books on my table in the other room um aja i forget the name of the person who was like the lead on the matt fraction hawkeye it's something aja i want to say or aha 
but um i i just love like how like their comic style because it is very like clean you know like and then the paneling is really clean they also you know <laughs> did the doggy <laughs> issue any any yeah. issue that he didn't do for the for the Hawkeye run it's it's harder for me to read because I love it so much but it's just it's just so clean and I think that's nice because then it just kind of like makes a nice tableau yeah uh, so that even if you're having just this like Shade, sha yeah David Aha David Aja whatever whichever one it is I'm sorry I'm stupid I'm dumb but um yeah, because literally it's just like shot A, shot B, shot A, shot B, shot A, B, <laughs> shot A, shot A, shot B, shot B, shot B. <laughs> yeah. Just like it's it's so repetitive, but it still looks nice. Um, and it kind of goes back to like they they still just like worked in the speech bubbles, even though it's like incredibly incredibly small panels. Because you know, like if if there's a lot to say, then the face will just smoosh. And then the mouth will get cut off. It's it's like a close up, so it doesn't look too awkward. So yeah, but at the same time, it's just like this is all extra. Like it's it's it reads kind of, like you know you don't usually read this way when you're uh, reading an American comic. So it is kind of weird that it goes like diagonally down, but. In, in a way again it's just like you're just getting from there to there this is all just extra information so it's right. it still reads really nice and it, it kind of makes like an interesting page to look at <laughs> and then there's a nice it's... just like i don't know there's some real nice face work in there too yeah because um uh one thing you'll see sometimes is just like if two characters are having like this back and forth conversation instead of doing all these like micro panels they'll just do one big panel and have like a lot of speech bubbles right and i think this is a nice answer to that um instead of just like uh, cramming in because you know it's it's a comic the text is very important but like so the image is like equally as important so you don't want to like go crazy one way or the other so yeah this this I just thought was interesting as I was going through because I was like, oh, this is a weird page, but it's you know it's it's like a good example of the talking heads. Like it's nice. Yeah. It's not just yeah. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be all action. You can yeah. still make a, a real interesting looking panel or page when it's just two people talking. <laughs> What other stuff do I have around? Uh, this is where I'm off script. Where am I? Uh, okay. I guess I, cause I didn't, I didn't have time to collect any of my other shit. Um, with Hawkeye PI, uh, a lot of it is just two characters having conversations and rooms so um that was that was a fun thing to do or just having conversations in like small places mm -hmm. so i guess i guess we're just gonna like go page by page so um and that was another thing about like i'm on a deadline ha <laughs> um I have to be economic about my storytelling. I have to be efficient with it. So, you know, they're having this kind of like character building chatter um, where, you know, they're just kind of like chit chatting, they're talking, but uh, I, I use the space in between to kind of like inform a lot about the characters uh, so he's just like, okay, they're getting in a car. They're getting inside of a traced Tesla. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Fucking... Hey, uh, you know, not not to... <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, but like people who make free 3D assets to trace. I guess it's less of a thing now that I'm using Clip, but like, can you make something other than a Tesla? Thanks. <laughs> um... Oh my god, I just realized I never colored this in. 
oops. <laughs> Oh. Uh, yeah oopsie that's a different guy you know that's the same guy it looks like a different thing <laughs> it's just the way the light's hitting it it's washed out yeah exactly lighting is key yeah he has i i wanted to have little character details that's one of those things that you can just like do in the interim while your characters are like having a conversation because even though they're inside of a car and it's like a ride share car so like that's a very uh weird space to be in but i wanted him to have this little toy yeah on his thing uh my my brain is that uh his daughter gave him that so that's why it's kind of cutesy but you know that's his little toy uh four and so you know they're ha no you know they start having this conversation he's looking all serious uh, but since they're just kind of talking back and forth, I started kind of intercutting it with shots of like, okay, here's the street. <laughs> they're in a car. They're like, you know, going around. You know, this takes place in like Brooklyn. So like they're going through like all these little neighborhoods. So it's just without having to draw a neighborhood. Um, there's just, oh, I do. I really like the, like just like hint of well. hint of telephone pole with tons of crap on it yeah. in that shot. Yeah, this is actually uh, an area I would walk by from the subway to see one of my friends. So I think this is the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> figure out what neighborhood like, they're in. <laughs> it's like where we live. Yeah. Hey. But yeah, so. I did, since I walked by it so much, I just oh. took photos, so that was my reference. And, um, you know, it's just little bits. So that that's the... Little bits. You know, if you know, you know. If you don't, it's fine. But, like, you know, it's just like, oh, this is Brooklyn. Like, that's the establishing shot. And so, you know, they're having this conversation in the car, and Schmidt's being kind of annoying. So, you know, you know he's not really kind of he's distracted he's kind of dumb so then again it's just like environmental details on who these fellas are so i wanted to give him like <laughs> so his good. stupid spotify playlist <laughs> pretending to take a phone call one track <laughs> trying to give hints on to what kind of guy Nando is. Like, he has a bit of a sense of humor. And also and, his phone's uh, cracked. <laughs> yeah, he's dropped his phone. He will not repair it. He doesn't want to bother with that. He doesn't even so... have a case for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Who is it? Jacob doesn't have a case for his phone. He drives me crazy. Insane. Actually insane. <laughs> How do you live with yourself? But yeah, it's the it's little details like that that can inform, like give you extra information about the character. So like if they're having this like back and forth conversation, you can fill in like the interim with these like little moments. Like again, this is just like showing they're still in the car, they're on a bridge now. Uh I wanted to show that Nando has like a bit of a relaxed posture. You know, just give hints on to what kind of people they are. Oh yeah, you've got uh, to, to like the, yeah, just seeing that they're they're sitting yeah. a little different. Uh, for panels themselves, do you crop after the drawing or create the panels and put the drawing in? I personally create the panels and put the drawing in. I think, um, uh, because. I, I don't view making comics as like you're doing these illus like you sh I don't think it should be you know, personally the Karina method I don't think it should be like you're making these big illustrations and then confining it to a panel you should be crafting it like as the panel right um, that makes sense yeah um because yeah it's all it's all thoughts also, this was just a silly little thing. Oh, I keep bumping these in the wrong place. So uh, one thing I wanted to do with like uh, 
their introduction where they're first meeting is that I wanted it to have like this kind of detective noir mood to it because you know like they Nando doesn't know who Schmidt is like he doesn't really understand like what his deal is yet uh or like know anything about him he just thinks he's this detective right so uh that's out of order so I wanted to have like this noir feel uh feel to it so uh Schmidt is always cast in shadow in the back seat yeah to kind of like indicate like oh he's so mysterious but then uh as as Nando kind of uh gets him to open up he's uh fully out of the shadow and then later uh <laughs> once it turns out he's not a, a real fucking detective he's just like uh completely not in shadow because it was actually just a farce the whole thing <laughs> like it's not a noir they were literally in a car in the middle of the afternoon with the right. sun out yeah so it's just little tricks like that Change the mood, subvert expectation. But yeah, it's just Use you. You can do whatever silly shit you want with your comic. <laughs> um, but I do, I do like little details like that. So I try to work them in myself. He's good. Yeah. So He's that just, that's just he's... my that's my little approach to like having a conversation. What else do we do? A conversation. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to reread all of Hot Guy PI after this. So it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so hard. Anytime I took like a class, or you know, right now, just where the examples are panels from comics that I, I want to read more of. I'm just like, oh well, I don't want to. <laughs> I stop paying attention to the class. I'm just like, I just want to read those comics now. Oh my God, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, this was my other thing is when they just start having a conversation, it's, I would just have it like be a full page. This was my answer to cram a bunch of dialogue into one page. It's so I could show like the area around them, like absolute our real male living spaces they haven't set up the office yet so it's just it's just disorganized laptop desk chair boxes yeah. <laughs> the laptop he's not even using the desk and it's crooked <laughs> yeah very big like um, Yu-Gi-Oh bed energy in this <laughs> yeah, like, Schmidt Schmidt your desk <laughs> Schmidt stop <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so stuff like that that's just my own thoughts on my own work I do you, you know you, you can just do whatever you can just do it I believe I just noticed I never colored that's this guy so in. funny that's so funny <laughs> no one commented <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it's one of those it's one of those color changing uh oh. rear view mirror yeah it's actually fully white on the front it's just the back is pink yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah um i reached the end of my notes and also my examples <laughs> who's got questions we got half go. hour for questions yeah, 30 more minutes <laughs> No, don't say. Man. I hearken back to Hawkeye P.I. a lot, but it is like the hardest I've worked on a comic. <laughs> that shit was hard. That smell like garbage. What res do I draw comics in? Um, big. Uh, <laughs> big. Well, it's it's difficult to say because um, I haven't done a comic in a while, but I usually draw them quite large with the intent that maybe I could print them. Uh, 
So I try to make them big enough that if I wanted to print them, I could. But if it's something that I'm also considering, I would probably do it to uh, the size of the page of a book. But, yeah, because uh, these, like, for Hawkeye PI, it was at a very weird specific set resolution because of the platform it was going on. Right. So, um, which I do not remember what it is, but I think I did it two or three times bigger, like, you know, multiplied, <laughs> uh, like, twice as large as it needed to be, Um because it's always just nice to like work big and scale down. You can't really do the same backwards. So always work big because you can scale down easier than scaling up. That shit sucks. But um, when I printed Hawkeye PI as a book, it was really fucking annoying because it's like a weird size. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, just make it big. Make it big. Real big. As big as you can without breaking your computer. Yeah. <clears throat> How do you organize layers for a comic? Do you make separate layer or separate folder for each panel or just have one big layer for colors, etc.? Um, if I'm doing... Uh, I mean, the my answer is basically uh, layer for panels layer for line art you know layer for color i i organize it the same way i don't know you know what that's a wonderful question how do i organize my bullshit um <laughs> yeah, how do you organize your bullshit yeah that's that's a great <laughs> question uh because i don't do it that differently than do i have oh god what is this <laughs> Love these Karina um, mumbles. Because <laughs> I have the files for Hawk IPI on my computer, but like only some of them. <laughs> and they're not finished. <laughs> um but nah, like Yeah, I, I'm i more organized about my layers in, oh, I say, as there's one, as, as there's layer eight right underneath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, like, I don't typically do a bunch of them on, like, one big-ass platform, or platform, uh, document, for file, file. <laughs> so like i think when i laid out hawkeye pi it was all on one file but then once i got past the uh making the bubbles also oh, how fun <laughs> these bubbles don't have why don't they have borders we just don't know <laughs> but um no way to know yeah i i split it into the different pages like i don't try to load too much shit onto one go so for this one it's just you know i have one doc one file for page 24 and then just here's all the stuff for it uh uh there's two demons two demons i do a little differently because <laughs> uh my sagi files those are less in well, actually, those aren't a good show of how I work. Where is my thing? Where is my thing? Let's see. Pooties. Pooties. My favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! series. <laughs> Pooties nuts. Ah! <laughs> rainy outside it's it really is oh clip studio said how dare you make me open this dumb fucking file live with it my dude wow <laughs> this is how i do two demons because 
this again. It's so tall. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. Because two demons is like, um, I, you know, it's it's gonna get printed <laughs> if I ever finish it. <laughs> but um, it's largely, uh, you know, I posted it first on Tumblr, so it's like a scroll comic. So right, you know, I typically tend to just do it as one long scroll. Do you know um, how it how you're gonna end it? Or... I do. The okay. ending's been written for years. I just don't have time to work on it. Gotcha. <laughs> and also, you know, well, as um, as stated before, that's the hardest part. Yeah. So. Like, do you know how hard it is? I bet I have like the thumbnails. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I have. I started. I started the thumb. Like, I did the thumbnails for the next part, and like. Part of the reason I haven't updated Two Demons in like two years God. is because, like, uh, well, one, I've, I've kind of gotten, Jesus. you know, it's it's Overwatch. Overwatch is kind of uh, now it's it's not as fun as it used to be, and it's just like not my favorite thing anymore. It so it's hard. Huh? I just I got I got a Are spam call. I can get buzzed. I'm getting Ooh. it's all happening. But um, it's great. So aside from the fact that it's just kind of like on the back burner because um, Blizzard keeps being such a questionable company, um, the next part, the next part, the thumbnails are three separate PSDs. Wow. It's called Big One. Big One. Yeah. Here, you want a sneak peek? Ooh, spoilers! Look at how fucking long this is. Oh. This is hard. Making comics is hard, dude. It's a lot. Yeah, like, it's so long. <laughs> so, like, yeah, Two Demons is my um, Rock Lee removing weights yeah. <laughs> comic project. So, uh, it, it is a little overambitious at that point. And um, I like to have each update have, like, a proper story arc. So uh, if it doesn't, you know, if it takes 50 panels to kind of reach a point where I like want it to end for the cliffhanger, like then I, I got to do 50 panels. Yeah. And that's hard. You got to tell the <laughs> so story. Leave me alone. Um, anyway. It's a big thump, is... thumps a clock in the hallway right now. Oof. I don't know. <laughs> Nathan's having a time. I'm having a time over but, here. Yeah. Um, this is my favorite Two Demons update. I kind of, I kind of snapped on this. Yeah, I kind of served, but um, yeah. How is this? How is this? What am I? Okay, so the text is all on one layer. Uh, I guess I don't know what that is. <laughs> so line, line art. art. Yeah, I, I am a little monster in that I will keep things. I will flatten layers to be as manageable as possible sometimes. Um, so the, the boxes, like the paneling is all on its own layer. Um, at least you, at least you've labeled them kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, I do actually label my layers sometimes. So all the blood is all on one layer. And Red then the, M. yeah. Yeah. The M is for multiply. It's a multiply layer. And then just all the fill is on one layer, so so cool. It's uh yeah yeah. I I try to keep it pretty organized. A little too organized. I don't know if I should keep flattening the layers the way I do. How is this one layer? I <laughs> I hate my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be back that. <laughs> Got it but, in one. Yeah, apparently. I'm just like, I don't know. I've been I've been working on a project that's had so much layering involved in it that I'm just like, wow. I don't even have I don't have folders. Well, I have one folder that's just for the sketches. I got a lot of sketches on this one. You can look at the sketches. Okay, we got sketch. 
Did Whoa. you measure out? Nope. <laughs> okay, there we go. Did you huh? measure out the panel divides or eyeball it or use a tool? Um, I think the way I did it for two demons is, so here's my rough. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> so true, it was. bestie. <laughs> it sure um, was. So I would kind of like rough, like do the rough sort of layout, and then I would literally just go in with like, because uh, I did these in Photoshop. So I would just go in and do like, burp, <laughs> and then do that. Yeah. So what is that? I wouldn't say I used a tool for it, but you know, I. I just did it. <laughs> um, like I eyeball it, yeah. It's just like okay, so let me get sketch two. It's nice. It's like, what are all my fucking sketch Ooh. layers? Who is she? Oh yeah. Oh, love a love a loose Karina sketch. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, these are good. So movement. Damn. So I might be dynamic. Good at art. <laughs> um yeah, those are those are very violent. <laughs> That's okay, they're mostly obscured in the final. <laughs> what are any of these goddamn layers? Uh okay, I just I just redid these panels a lot. That's why they have so many layers. Nice. Tightening. I do a lot of sketch layers. I don't know if that's ever shown in my infuriating process videos. So yeah. So <laughs> I think I literally just started with this and then just kind of built on top of it. So that when I did the like boxes, it was mostly just here are my box layers. Box. It was really just like kind of following what was there. Maybe just like a little. Yeah, because they're super even. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just draw them in using, like, the straight line tool. Nice. So. Yeah. Um, comics. Uh, have you... Have I... Ever done a comic traditionally... Or do you only do digital comics? We know you did Moonpaw traditionally, the original. <laughs> but I guess since Moonpaw. Oh my god! I told my mom I was gonna be doing this stream, and then she's like, "Oh, what are you teaching?" And I'm like, "Comics." And she's like, "Oh, like that one you did that we sent you." And I was like, <laughs> "Moonpaw, yeah." <laughs> Well, uh, I've never done a full comic traditionally. I've done, I've done like some, God, the answer is no. Like I did a little bit of comics in like, uh, high school traditionally, but like, <laughs> if I open, okay, cool. Digital makes it easier for sure. Yeah. And it already seems really hard even even with the way digital makes it easier which is yeah. like all that stuff plus you can't undo or like move stuff around right i'm pulling up my old deviant right i'm just like i know i know i know the computer said stop stop okay we'll close this we'll close the real chonky file for you but you have to open deviant art <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where's my guy? Okay. This is one that I did in high school. Um, that's, that's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> a bitch is still hand lettering to this day. Like, you know, it's it's not as good because I, I was just less skilled back then. Um, well, you understand, like, the... It's got, like, yeah. real nice... Oh, break frame breaking the panel there. That's cool. You love frame frame breaking. These are my problematic high school OCs. But 
Yeah, I guess this is like the only one I can think of. That's I guess cool. I did. I guess I did um, the original uh, bottom floor comics as uh, traditional. I did these. In oh wow! Well. Yeah. Look You've... at these uneven fucking lines. <laughs> You've actually done quite a lot of traditional comics. Yeah, but this was like, gosh, like over a decade ago. Still so. though. Yeah. These were really, really funny impressive. because, thank you, in high school, uh, it was a fine arts kind of focus program. So even though I was like very firmly, like by the time I was a senior doing like comics and fucking anime drawing and like animation, I still had to kind of conform to a gallery setting. So these original comics are literally 18 by 24 wall pieces. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so wow. they're quite large but yeah these are just like micron and copic um because they were meant to be like hung up on a gallery wall <laughs> they had me jumping through hoops to draw my silly little comics in high school <laughs> silly big comics more like yeah massive but yeah and then i eventually redid these like digitally uh yeah, i think i college. read the digital versions yeah the digital ones like out on my Tumblr. So, uh, delightful. Okay. Oh, I see. Question How do you decide when to simplify the background for a panel and when to go more detail? Well, <laughs> when you feel like not drawing a background, <laughs> um, I think that's another thing that is like it, it depends. I'm gonna, I'm like flipping real quick through my, uh, curated, uh, examples of like do i have a good thought about any of these let's just go to the absolute pog pog master 3000 <laughs> um yeah because you know uh this fella this artist will always give such background but I think I think there's just a lot of instances where it's just like if you don't need the background to like inform anything like spatially right. or like give any detail about like the setting or anything like just don't do it. Right. Like for example, you know, you don't want anything distracting from the fact that he's like holding this, so you don't you don't do it. This is and you know, this is like also pretty simple, but you know it's he's still on that couch, so you're gonna put in the couch, but not really anything else. And you know, cause like he's in a room, he's in this nice ass room, but once the action starts, you're gonna really give like you're not gonna distract from like like this moment this moment it would be too confusing if you like drew in all the walls and all the furniture because like you got to make it clear that like, like this is happening because you you know if according to like this angle you could probably still see that lamp in the background um if you know so it would be like here but right. that would be like a weird thing to put in the background because yeah. for the sake of like the reader you don't want to distract from the fact that like oh he's reaching for the gun because if you put the lamp there it's like there's a lamp there right <laughs> So, um, but then, yeah. yeah, he has the gun, and now the lamp is falling, and so we want to indicate like it's 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 what your what information is is important, yeah, to be conveyed. So it's like he yeah. has the gun, then everything's falling on him, so it, it reappears. Um, but yeah, then, yeah. It's not a question, but for characters, I mean, same sort of deal where it's just like, you know. If, if you have, like, I think this is also kind of an interesting example because, like, this artist will put so much detail into freaking every panel. Like, you don't, I'm, I'm not saying, like, that's a stupid idea. Like, that's, it's beautiful. Like, I fucking love Black Sad. It's such a good comic. It's ev every, every frame of masterpiece, every frame of painting, quite literally. Right. Yeah. But, um, you know, like, for example, in this one, uh, you're still in the same room, the couch is there. But, you you know, even in this case, like, you don't really want to clutter up this composition by adding, like, all of the details to the background. So the window is just kind of, like, implied, 
you know, he, he washed, uh, no, I lost it. He washed it in using the watercolors, but he didn't really like add the line work because then your attention stays like on, on them. Uh, but yeah, so I think it's just like, it's good to have like these little background elements to kind of like continue filling like you know it's good here to kind of like fill that space but if it's not really like if it's going to distract from and then there's the most beautiful background of all right um but if it's and, and you know boop. <laughs> if it's going to distract too much from like the actual uh thing you're trying to show then just like you know don't don't show it because it'll clutter things up and um because mike says same with characters same with characters if, if it's gonna be too confusing I, I assume you mean like if there's characters in the panel like do you show them and i'm like well if it's gonna be like distracting from what you're actually trying to show then no right so um uh I mean, I guess this is an interesting example on the same thing where it's just like you know, uh it's it's the direct follow up to this panel where you're kind of like seeing him and like his expression, he's he's taking a drag. <laughs> <laughs> now he's falling In asleep. The he's taking a drag. Yeah, oh my god, he's wow. falling asleep. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, like, these these two panels just are, like, direct, you know, one, two. But with this one, like, it wants you to look, like, see that he left the gun there. So you're kind of losing, like, Black's hat a little bit. Like, he's still there, obviously, but, you know, you don't see his eyes. You're not really seeing any, like expression other than he's like smoking the cigarette so um it allows you to kind of like focus away from him because you know if you see a character's face you're gonna look at the face face recognize face face recognize but face. um you know but for this one like you kind of obscure the character a little so it's just like well he's still here but now there's this in the shot because you know it was in the shot before but it's not the focus this is the focus and then by cropping out the eyes now you end up kind of you know the line work is also heavier this time but like now you see that the gun in the bag the gun in the bag that he was dangling in his face <laughs> before he got shot <laughs> now he's falling asleep now he's and he's taking a drag and the gun in the bag <laughs> 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 but everything you need to know about how to do comics is written into the the song yeah. Mr. Brightside by the Killers. Yeah. I mean, as someone who like doesn't really enjoy Yeah, this is this is Karina B really fucking cocky hour, I suppose. Um Clip Studio, please. It's just a PNG. <laughs> um, I don't typically like, like this one was really difficult. So like in this part of Two Demons, they're in this like, uh, what is supposed to be kind of like a building that exploded a really long time ago. So there's just kind of like the <laughs> oh, recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's like the framework <laughs> of a building. There's all this rubble and like all fucked up and shit and um so one thing i was doing and this doesn't show it super well but it's, it shows it kind of like as i was already easing into it um was that as he's kind of like getting lost in his own thoughts the background starts kind of swirling and being really disorienting because like it's just a lot of miscellaneous garbage behind him like steel beams and like concrete so it always is just kind of like a bunch of stuff, but like, you know, snaps, you know, snap out of it. And it's just kind of like more normal, but it starts to get kind of like fucky wucky right. as, as he's kind of like lost in his thoughts. 
So then, like, once he's kind of, like, losing his grip of shit, it's fully just kind of, like, spinning out of control. But then once it's kind of just, like, back to the overworld, it's normal again. So, and there it goes. It's all fucked up. All fucky wucky. Poor guy. <laughs> when the fuck be wuck. But, um, yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, as with any other piece of art or, like, art medium, you can just kind of fuck around and do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you think it's, like, you know, if it informs if it informs the reader of, like, anything, you can kind of, like, do whatever with the background. It's like, oh, that's not the focus? Then don't include it too prominently. Just kind of, like, make it, make it less. But, um... And again, if you know, it comes if there's back like to... information you can like give in the background, like throw it in. Right, and it comes back to like that first step of like writing it all out and thumbnailing, mm -hmm. and so you have like, you know, you're you're viewing each panel in the context of the story you're trying you're trying to tell, and so it's like, what information yeah. have I already given in a previous panel, or what information am I going to reveal in the next panel? Like, do I need to? Yeah, I, I think it's really helpful uh, to to view the the comic as a whole with with that thumbnail and and initial writing step, so that like when you're going in to do these details and you're you're making these decisions, you can always st take a step back and like look at the whole story you're telling and be like, okay, like what's the function? What function does this individual panel serve in like the the comic as a whole? And so it's like, do I need do I need this lamp here or does the lamp actually distract from what's important here? Uh, yeah. Or does the lamp in fact add to what's important here because it shows that like stuff's falling on this guy and there's like motion and the, the background, what stuff that was in the background is now part of the, the foreground because it's literally like falling on top of the character. And so yeah, if you can, if you can if you can plan it all out, the more planning you can do, I think the easier it is to make those individual decisions. Uh, um, is there anything you would tell anyone thinking of their first comic to avoid doing? <laughs> Putting it off, just fucking do it. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, make it. I guess, I guess, yeah, just like make your damn comic. Make your damn do a, Neopets comic, Karina. Do a but, bad job um, the first one, and then you can improve. Yeah. I mean, part of learning, like, how you, like, because like I said, this is the Karina method, mm -hmm. TM, but um, that, you know, that's from, like, years and years of just kind of fucking around and seeing, like, how I feel about, like, you know, doing, doing the big comics and stuff um, more than anything. This is just, like, a personal style, and as you actually, like, do comics yourself like you'll find your own way of styling uh, and like how you like to do paneling and how you like to tell a story um i will say like especially if if comics is hard because it is um don't you know, be economic with your storytelling that's like an advantage that you have doing a comic over you know, like an animation, like you can limit the amount of panels you do and then just kind of like chalk as much information as you want into each one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, this was something I talked about in a different stream, I remember, but, uh, one, one thing I would do a lot with two demons, unfortunately, and I don't, I don't, I think I kind of stopped doing it at this point, but like, I would have a lot of extra panels to kind of, you know, like indicate that shift in emotion. Cause like I said, I come in with animator brain and I'm just like, there would be this shot where you kind of see the gentle change in a character's emotion, like the subtle change and that's acting. And like, it's, it indicates so much, but like it doesn't quite read the same as a comic. And um, uh, yeah, like, you have you know you be economic with like what kind of information you provide and how you provide it because it is its own medium 
Right. And I think especially like nowadays with the popularity of like animation and independent animation and independent comics, like it is a lot of people kind of, you know, similarly going in with like less formal knowledge of it, which is fine. But, you know, like like I said, I have animator brain. You you don't have to treat it like an animation. It's its own special little medium. So, um, you know, it, yeah. it can be kind of annoying that it's like, but if I don't show the absolute subtle shift in Hanzo's little facial expression in between these two panels, I will scream and piss. But, like, you don't need to show that. And uh, that that's a that's the thing that you learn as you do comics is that, you know, as as nice as it would be like in my mind to kind of have like a lot of little like, you know, details to inform like, you know, character emotions like you would in, say, an anime or anything like you you don't really have this it's not the same ballpark. So you don't really have to do that, but you can do other things instead that'll hit real hard because like i said Pow. that one hawkeye thing with the dog like that would work really differently in a different medium but like right. as a comic like it it fits the medium so well so just remember that you're working in a cool little medium and you can go a little wild style and see what happens but you also don't have to do so much work <laughs> if it's hard because it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope this was helpful. I never know. Uh, I found it fascinating. Oh, I'm glad. And now I <laughs> have a list of comics I need to read. Yeah, if you want to borrow any of the ones that I mentioned today, Nathan, I have like yeah, I have all of these. <laughs> Just tell me which ones. Okay. Uh I don't yeah, need these are Watchmen. all from my I have Yeah, all all the Watchmen. all the samples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Baby's I should first pick mine. Adult <laughs> adultish <laughs> comic. Yeah. God. Yeah. Um yeah. All the samples I, I showed today are just like things from my personal collection that, you know, they're comics that I've read as a student and they really stuck with me or just like I, I, you know, B stars. I didn't read as a student. I was fully an adult by the time that was out. But, um, you know, like it's it's things to think about. I, I've given a lot of thought to the adaptation of B stars, and I'm like, yeah, it's very interesting. So it's a good it's a good show of like the difference between a comic and an anime. But yeah, wow. So if you want to borrow any Nathan, I got. I have them all physically. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Yeah, and, and then I'll, you can and then you keep can, it for months. And you can roast me. <laughs> I will. Yay, I will. My dream. <laughs> it's finally your turn. Yeah, <laughs> Get over here. I was jealous of Jacob getting all the getting all the shit. Yeah. <laughs> Give all me right. some shit. <laughs> ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> So that was comics. That's but like, comics. But Karina method. <laughs> the face on butt like is so good. <laughs> <laughs> we all know her. But yeah, and thank you again to our patrons. Yeah, thank um, you so much. Thank you, mods. Yeah, thank you for being early this month. It's it's a weird month. Um Right, yeah. <laughs> maybe so, maybe some patrons who couldn't make this stream will will watch the VOD before it goes up. That would be nice, wouldn't it? And you uh, earned that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as always, we're sorry. Sorry.